How's it going guys? This is Michael with Misty Mountain Guiding Service and I'm going to do a uh, tying video for you. So I'm going to be tying a fly that I don't really know what to call. It's kind of a mayfly nymph slash scud kind of pattern. I use it primarily on trout streams here in the Ozarks. Uh, it's just kind of a do-it-all attractor. Uh, I'll be tying it today on a Daiichi, uh, we're going to model 1130 in size 16. It's kind of a light wire scud hook. And we've got a little bead. I'm not sure what size bead it is, but it, it fits. So uh, tungsten, definitely tungsten. I would not recommend tying without tungsten. For thread, we're using 6 out uni. And so we're going to start wrapping at the base of the uh, bead there, and we're just going to add a little bit of a thread base, and we'll clip our tag end. All right, so from there, we're going to run our thread all the way to the back, and we're going to go almost to the very apex of the bend of that hook there, and then we're going to come back up a little bit, and right about to where the hook starts really curving. So at this point, we're gonna use some pheasant tail. And I like to go pretty heavy on the pheasant tail. This is oh, 12 or so, 10 or 12, 14, something like that, fibers that I'm cutting off here. And we're gonna use the very tips. We're creating the tail. So you lay it kind of up there, get a rough idea of what length you're wanting. I usually go a little bit under a hook shank length so we're looking for something about like that we're going to switch our grip here and then we're going to do one loose wrap over the top and then we're going to kind of give it a look see if it's centered or not it looks all right so we're going to do one more loose wrap over top and we're going to make sure it's centered so we're having a rotary vise really comes in handy So I'm going to pinch down on this wrap here, nice tight one, and then keep coming back, and we're doing tight wraps all the way back. Now if you, I'm going to show you guys something real quick, if you decide you don't like that, let's say you think the tail's too long, you can actually just keep those loose wraps, this is why we do loose wraps first, you can just barely pull this pheasant tail back. And you want your tail there? Okay, great. So you can kind of see it's coming undone there. So we'll do another loose wrap and we'll kind of just pick it up, roll it over. Looks good. Then we'll crank down on the thread again. I got one loose, two loose fibers there. If you can see them that I'll have to trim out, but that's no problem. Go back a few times. and then back up. So we want our thorax to be right around in this area. So what I'm doing there is I'm just kind of tightening everything up. So now this area right through here is going to be our thorax and we're going to leave these fibers in place for our wing case. So next I'm going to use some UV clear flashaboo. And that's going to be our ribbing material. A lot of guys use gold wire. I think that's what the original here's your pattern calls for, but I use this UV stuff just because I think it looks a little bit more natural. And you'll see what I'm talking about. I know flashaboo and natural do not go in the same sentence. <laughs> All right, so we'll kind of put that back there. <clears throat> For dubbing, using Hair's Ear Plus dubbing, uh, this is kind of a darker variety, kind of just a gray scud. It's got a little bit of sheen to it, which I really like. We're just gonna grab a little pinch here. 
and we're just gonna roll it onto the thread. We're not doing anything too precise here. I'm kind of dubbing it fairly thick on there just because I really want this to be a, a buggy section of the fly. From there we're gonna wrap. I'm gonna polymer up. It looks a little bit thick, but trust me, that's gonna come down. So I'm gonna pull the rest of that dubbing off. We don't need it right here. But I will set that aside because we're gonna use some more dubbing on this fly for sure. And I'll come kind of behind there just to kind of secure all that. We're gonna start wrapping our ribbing material for our flashaboo. Oops. and we're gonna pinch that down. You can see how that really compressed all that dubbing. We're gonna come in front here and we're just gonna kinda, oops, we're gonna tie up onto that pheasant tail just a little bit. So I want just a little bit more room there. And I'll tie in front of that just to kind of taper it down. It's a NIM, so we can add extra thread and not have to worry about it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clip off the excess flashaboo here. Didn't realize my camera's off kilter there. So, now we're going to add some more pheasant tail. Same stuff we were using before. I'm gonna grab about the same amount, maybe a little bit more that we used for the tail. And this is gonna be our wings. So you got them in a good clump like that. We're gonna have the point sections of the pheasant tail pointing towards the head of the fly. And what we're gonna do is kind of a reverse tie technique where we're gonna wrap over it here. Loose wrap, sort of loose wrap. Now we're kind of getting into a tight wrap there. Now we wanna look at it on the top and look at the profile. As you can see, the way I tied this in, you're gonna get the majority of your fibers coming off on this side. So we need to move some of these fibers over just a little bit. That's why we don't wanna cinch down on it real hard just yet. So from here, you kinda of have to pull these back a little bit and you can tie it in front of them. Actually, we're not gonna do that yet. Let's go ahead and wrap all the way up here. We'll do a couple more securing wraps. I do it different ways. You do it the way that works best for you. If I can get in there. All right. We'll secure these down just a little bit more. Gonna grab some more dubbing, the same stuff we were using before. We're gonna dub our thorax.
Now we're gonna wrap these wings back a little bit. Come in on that one side, come in on the other side. And now I'm gonna pull them back, as you can see, and I'm gonna wrap in front of them a few times. You may have to come in here and adjust them a little bit, that's not a problem. So now that they're kind of off to the sides, I'm gonna come in with our wing case, come over the top, and what that's gonna do is create your wing case like that, and it's also gonna have these fibers really flaring back the way you want them. We'll do one loose wrap. Adjust if needed. We do another loose wrap. Adjust if needed. And here's a tie wrap. We'll do a couple more. And then I'll wrap in front. And now you can see they're really, those fibers are really pushed back now. You can kind of come in here if you need to clean up a little bit of straggling pieces of the dubbing, go ahead and snip those out. And we can also go ahead and clip the excess from our wing case. Once you've done that, go ahead and throw in some wood finishes. Sometimes I tie these with red thread and it kind of just creates a hot spot. This time I just went with tan. So we're almost done. The last thing we need to do is pick out the dubbing on the belly of this fly. And the reason why I do that is this is the quote unquote scuddy part of the fly. This is like legs. Scuds have a lot of little bitty weird legs that come out. So I like to pick out this dubbing. And I left my bodkin downstairs, so we're using Dr. Scholl scissors to pick this out. And don't pick this out where you laid in your uh, your ribbing. Just do it out of the, uh, the bottom side of the wing case there, your thorax. The more you pick out, the buggier it gets. I throw in one more whip finish there. Broke my thread, so we're done there. There you have it. The scud, hair's ear thing. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you haven't already, check out Misty Mountains on Facebook, Instagram. I'd love to take you fishing. I'd love to sell you some flies. Let's see if I'll focus there. I do fly fishing uh, lessons, fly tying lessons. Come check me out. Thanks.